Hi YouTube, Watchify here with another video. For this video I wanted to compare and contrast the famous Seiko Flightmaster SNA411 with the Citizen EcoDrive Nighthawk model BJ7052E. In the past these two watches were often considered similar aviation style watches and I think that mainly has to do with the appearance of their dials and how you can use them to perform various calculations. However, in some aspects, these two Japanese brand watches are very different, so I'll go over that and also let you know which watch I like more. I believe both are officially discontinued, but you can still find them for sale both new and pre-owned. At the time of this video, on eBay, the Seiko Flightmaster sells for $300 new. On Amazon, it's found selling for almost $400. This Citizen Nighthawk model can still be found on Amazon for just under $300, but the best price I found was from gray market seller Joma Shop at $225. Movement-wise, on the Seiko, you get the regular battery-powered Quartz Movement 7T62. It's got a date complication and three subdial complications. With the Seiko, you get the added functionality of a chronograph and an alarm over the Citizen. The Citizen has the solar-powered EcoDrive caliper B877 inside. That alone might make you decide that the Citizen is the better watch, but to me it's not a big deal to change out the Seiko's battery every three years. In terms of accuracy, I will say that the Seiko Flightmaster is the only watch in my collection that never gains or loses time. Every time I check it, it's accurate down to the second. I think I just got lucky as all my other quartz movement watches gain time including this Citizen Nighthawk, which has a standard accuracy rating of plus or minus 15 seconds a month. For case size, I measured the Seiko at 41.5 millimeters, while the Citizen is a bit larger at 42.4. The odd thing about the Citizen is that almost the entire 42 millimeters is taken up by the dial, and this makes the watch appear larger. Lug-to-lug -lug distance on the Flightmaster is 44.3 millimeters compared to the Nighthawk's larger 46.7 millimeter measurement. Thickness is going to be 12.8 millimeters for the Seiko and 12.5 millimeters for the Citizen. The Seiko is thicker only due to its domed crystal. It's that domed hardlex crystal that gives the Flightmaster its distinctive look. You do pick up a lot of distortion though when viewed from an angle, but for me that adds to the appeal of the watch. The Citizen's flat mineral crystal offers great clarity however and you can see that it sits slightly above the bezel. Going back to the cases, on the Seiko you have a large unsigned screw down crown and two pushers that you have to unscrew to operate. The sides and the bottom of the case are polished with brushing seen at the top of the lugs. And in regards to the lugs, this watch has an odd 21mm lug width instead of the more common 20 or 22mm. The bezel is coin edged and bidirectional with a very smooth rotation. The flat aluminum bezel insert has markers that are used in conjunction with the rehote to perform calculations and conversions. Beyond that, you get a screw down case back and 200 meters of water resistance. The Citizen's case is all brushed and has sharp angles to it. There's a signed screw down crown at 3 o'clock surrounded by crown guards and at 8 o'clock you get a smaller unsigned crown that's used to rotate the inner chapter ring. I like that both crowns on the Citizen have a neural texture to them and the Citizen has a more commonly seen 22 millimeter lug width and is also water resistant to 200 meters. Both watches have loom on the dial and hands, with the Citizen's loom formulation always rivaling Seiko's loom bright in terms of brightness and longevity. With these two watches, the Citizen Nighthawk is a hands down winner when it comes to loom, simply because it has more of it than the Seiko does. The hour and minutes hand on the Seiko are pencil shaped, with the third chronograph hand being done in yellow. The four-handed Citizen has larger sword-shaped hour and minute hands 
in a white seconds hand that contrasts great against the dark dial. The fourth hand on the Citizen functions as a 24 hour hand with red and white airplane shapes on each end. The Nighthawk has a trick up its sleeve though as you can independently move the hour hand. So you could leave the 24 hour hand on home time and set the hour hand to local time or vice versa depending on which hand you set first. This means that the Nighthawk is essentially a GMT watch. For the dials, on the Flightmaster you'll notice that the black dial appears much smaller visually because it's surrounded by a wide sloping rehaut that has all the various measurements and markings on it in order to perform calculations. There's still room for the three sub-dials with the 60 minute timer at 12 o'clock, the alarm sub-dial at 6, and the second sub-dial at 9. There are only eight small round indices found on the Flightmaster's dial. The Citizen Nighthawk style has more prominent rectangle shaped polished applied indices that come to a point near the side closest to the dial center. You find large loom filled Arabic numerals at 12 and 6 and I like the font that Citizen used for them. You can see the solar panel on the dial surface if you look closely at it under light as it appears purplish. The dial on the Citizen takes center stage because it's so large because of the bezel on this watch being so minimal. In terms of bracelets, the Nighthawks is the better of the two in my opinion. It's got links that when viewed from the side look like an airplane wing. It has solid end links, continues that tool-like all brushed look, and it has a nicely milled scissor clasp. It just goes together really well with the watch in my view. The Flightmaster bracelet seen here has actually been modified by the brushing out of the large center link area that before was highly polished. I just felt that the polish in there was too blingy for my taste. This isn't a bad bracelet though as you get solid end links but also the OEM clasp is just stamped fold over metal. You can see that I replaced mine with an inexpensive aftermarket clasp. The other thing of note is that there is minimal to no taper on this bracelet. So in summary, these are truly both great watches. The Seiko Flightmaster is the less original design of the two as it's going to remind people of the Breitling Navitimer. But it's another one of those Seiko models that gained so much popularity that it's considered a Seiko classic and a must have for any Seiko collector. You get 200 meters water resistance, an alarm, and chronograph all for once was a very affordable price. I've said before that if Seiko reissued this watch with a solar movement and maybe put it in the prospects line, I think it would be a hot seller yet again. And just a quick word on packaging for these two watches. The Citizen came in this nice hinged black plastic case that has a latch, carrying handle, and raised Citizen in Promaster branding. While the Seiko just came in the standard white cardboard Seiko box and on a black pillow. So of the two, the Citizen's packaging is definitely more impressive and it makes you feel like you're buying a higher end watch. This Citizen is more original. Its GMT functionality is great to have along with its EcoDrive movement and I personally think it's one of Citizen's best designs with its little quirks like the airplane shapes and the inner 24 hour half dial. If I had to give up one, I would reluctantly part with the Seiko Flightmaster and keep the Citizen Nighthawk. I'd be interested to hear in the comments which of these two watches you would prefer to own. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and if you did, feel free to leave a like comment or even consider subscribing. I wanted to of course thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in another video.